North Korea has tested a new solid fuel intercontinental ballistic missile called the Hwasong-1. This is to radically promote the country's nuclear counterattack capability. The country has warned of extreme uneasiness and horror to its enemies. This comes just a day after North Korea fired what appeared to be a new model ballistic missile. It triggered a scare in northern Japan. Norway will expel 15 Russian embassy officials. The country's foreign ministry has said that these officials are intelligence officers operating under the cover of diplomatic positions. The, the expulsions include a quarter of Russian diplomats currently accredited in Oslo. Earlier this year, Estonia, Austria and the Netherlands also expelled Russian diplomats. The United Nations spokesperson Stefan Dujaric has said that he hopes that Alexei Navalny is given the treatment that he is entitled to. Navalny is a prominent Russian opposition leader who is behind bars. Navalny's spokesperson recently said that he's dealing with a mysterious ailment that could be some sort of slow-acting poison. She also said that Navalny has lost 8 kgs in just over two weeks. The spokesperson added that in the past, prison doctors treated Navalny by injecting him with a medicine that they refused to identify. Chinese forest Foreign Minister Qin Gang met his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov in the Uzbek city of Samarkand. He said that China is ready to work with Russia to maintain bilateral relations at a high level. Qin also noted that Chinese President Xi Jinping recently paid a successful visit to Russia which had fruitful results. Lavrov said that Russia firmly supports China in safeguarding its core interests. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva attended a wreath-laying ceremony in Beijing. It took place under the monument of People's Heroes in Tiananmen Square. The wreath-laying ceremony is a symbolic gesture, often attended by heads of states visiting China. This comes ahead of his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Lula aims to put Brazil back on the international stage after relative isolation under former President Jair Bolsonaro. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen thanked fighter pilots who scrambled against China's air force during its drills around the island nation. Tsai pledged to keep strengthening the country's armed forces. China began military exercises after Tsai returned from a trip to two Central American nations and the US. She met, a US, she met with a US House Speaker Kevin McCarthy despite China's threats. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has arrested a U.S. Air Force National Guard employee. The arrest has been made over the leak of classified U.S. documents. The Pentagon has called the leaks a deliberate criminal act. Some of the most sensitive details relate, uh, relate to Ukraine's military capabilities and shortcomings. These were part of the leak. The governor of the U.S. state of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has signed a bill that bans most abortions in the state after six weeks. The legislation makes exceptions for abortions in cases of rape, incest and when the mother's life is at serious risk. So far, Florida allowed abortion till 15 weeks of pregnancy. Notably, DeSantis is expected to seek a Republican nomination for the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Yesterday, hundreds of migrants made their way to the U.S.-Mexico border. They attempted to turn themselves in to U.S. Border Patrol in a bid to enter the United States. This comes after rumors that the Border Patrol was instructed not to deport people. However, the agency has reiterated that the conditions for crossing into the U.S. remain the same. Migrants at the shared border between Peru and Chile are in limbo. This comes as Peruvian officials stepped up control at the frontier crossing. Migrants have been complaining that they, along with their children, have been waiting without food or water. In March this year, Chile's president said that the government would strengthen border security. This is to reduce the flow of unauthorized immigrants. Protests against pension reform continue in France. Clashes erupted in Paris as protesters marched during the 12th day of the nationwide strike. 
Riot police fired tear gas and charged at demonstrators to disperse them. Several people have been arrested. The pension reform aims to increase the retirement age in France from 62 to 64 years of age. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to his UK counterpart Rishi Sunak. The two leaders agreed to resolve outstanding issues in the India-UK free trade agreement negotiations. The Indian Prime Minister also raised the issue of security of Indian diplomatic establishments in the UK. He sought strong action against violent protesters. Supporters of Argentina's vice president gathered to throw their weight behind her possible candidacy in the October presidential election. Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner is facing a six-year prison sentence and disqualification from holding public office. She faces corruption charges. Despite being disqualified from public office, Kirchner could still run for president this year as her conviction is not final. Two police officers have died and 15 have been injured after a bridge collapse in one of Colombia's provinces. Local authorities are investigating what caused it to collapse. The bridge was built in the year 1984. It has reportedly been regularly inspected. The last inspection was carried out three months ago. Journalists in Bolivia protested against a possible law that's expected to curb press freedom in the country. Some protesters taped their mouths shut to express their resentment. A bus carrying over 30 Israeli tourists in South Korea overturned. One tourist has been killed while dozens sustained injuries. The crash happened as the bus rolled backwards while the driver was shifting gears. The exact cause of the crash is under investigation. Torrential rains have drenched much of the greater Miami area in the US state of Florida. Cars have been stranded, schools have been closed, and Fort Lauderdale's airport is shut. The rains have also caused traffic jams. The city of Fort Lauderdale declared a state of emergency. It urged res residents to be patient as authorities worked to reopen flooded roads. Utah in the US is suffering severe floods this week. It has been on high alert since Wednesday. Its capital, Salt Lake, the mayor of that uh, city has issued an emergency order. People are voluntarily evacuating their homes. Last month, a tornado ripped through one of the poorest states in the US, Mississippi. It killed several people and destroyed homes. The survivors are now struggling economically, all while trying to rebuild their destroyed homes. A time-lapse of satellite imagery shows tropical cyclone Ilsa approaching Western Australia. It has triggered a red alert and evacuation orders. The cyclone gathered strength over the Indian Ocean and Port Hedland. That's one of the world's major iron ore shipping hubs. The Bureau of Meteorology has predicted that the Category 5 storm would bring a severe impact. Professional services company Accenture is delaying start dates for some of its new hires. This comes as the company is trying to carefully assess its massive workforce within a cost-conscious environment. Accenture had recently announced that it was laying off nearly 20,000 employees. Companies globally are laying off employees as part of cost-cutting measures. European luxury fashion house LVMH, more popularly known as Louis Vuitton, briefly made it to the world's top 10 companies. This was after the company's market value reached $486 billion, helped by its sales last quarter. If its market value reaches $500 billion, the brand would become the first European company to achieve that milestone. Plane maker Boeing has halted deliveries of some of its 737 MAX aircraft. This comes as the company deals with a new supplier problem. 
the issue will likely affect a significant number of undelivered 737 MAX airplanes. This could also result in lower deliveries of the model in the near term. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has said that G20 member nations see the need for global regulations to deal with challenges posed by crypto. The Indian FM has said that crypto asset that has not that any crypto asset that has that is not banked, backed by a central bank can lead to macroeconomic instability. She's also announced that discussions would take place in September and October to create a roadmap for crypto regulations. The Reserve Bank of India has begun evaluating bidders for a majority stake in India's state-owned IDBI Bank. According to reports, The International Monetary Fund has not yet agreed on a date with Egypt to review a $3 billion financial package. In December, the IMF had approved a $3 billion loan for Egypt. The loan was conditional upon thorough reviews that are yet to begin. Elon Musk has said that users can now monetize their content through subscriptions on Twitter. The content may include anything from long-range, long-form text to hours-long video. Users will get all the money that a subscriber pays for their content. This will exclude charges that platforms like Google or iOS levy. However, Twitter said that it will not take a cut for the first 12 months. Amazon's cloud computing unit, Amazon Web Services, has released a suite of technologies. These will help other companies develop their own AI chatbots. AWS is gearing up for a race alongside competitors like Microsoft and Google. Both Microsoft and Google are adding AI chatbots to their search engines. AWS is the world's biggest cloud computing provider. The European Data Protection Board has set up a task force on ChatGPT. The move is directed at creating general and transparent policies for the functioning of AI chatbots. ChatGPT is facing regulatory hurdles globally. Last month, Italy banned the use of the AI-powered tool. Spain has also said that it would investigate potential data breaches by the chatbot. Photoshop maker Adobe will pay $3 million to settle kickback allegations. These allegations include improper payments made to other companies that had contracts with the US government. This was done in order to influence the federal purchase of Adobe software. The Photoshop maker allegedly paid the companies a percentage of the software's price. Moving on to sports, in tennis, Lorenzo Musetti defeated world number one Novak Djokovic at the Monte Carlo Masters. Djokovic lost 4-6, 7-5, 6-4 to, Mus to Musetti. After the match, Djokovic said that the feeling is terrible. Musetti will now face Janik Sinner in the quarterfinals. The Women's Tennis Association has announced that it will return to China. This comes after all events were suspended in the country in 2021 due to uncertainty over tennis player Peng Shui's safety. Peng Shui has accused, had accused China's former vice premier, Zhang Gaoli, of sexual assault. In cricket, the England and Wales Cricket Board has launched a probe into head coach Brendan McCullum's betting advertisements. The former New Zealand captain had joined a betting organization as an ambassador in January. 
Later in March, he shared videos promoting the company's betting platform during the Indian Premier League. Rahul Tevatya of Gujarat Titans has recalled his performance after leading his side to a last over win in the Indian Premier League. Tevatya scored five runs off two deliveries. Gujarat Titans won the contest with six wickets and a ball to spare. Tevatya highlighted how he has been used, in a, uh, used to a situation like this and that he backed himself and executed the shot. In football now, Manchester United blew a two-goal lead and handed Sevilla an unlikely lifeline and a two-all draw. This was during the first leg of their Europa League quarter-final at Old Trafford. United appeared to be striding towards the semi-final. But Malasia's 84th-minute goal handed Sevilla a route back into the tie. The English Football Association said that no action will be taken in the incident involving Andy Robertson. The case refers to an assistant referee, Konstantin Hadzidakis, and his interaction with the Liverpool defender. Robertson had said that the referee hit him. Hadzidakis was suspended from duty while the incident was being investigated. New York Red Bull striker Dante Van Zier has been given a six-match suspension and a fine by Major League Soccer. Van Zier made racist remarks against opponent Jeremy Ebo Bise. He will now be required to participate in league-mandated training and education sessions. Van Zier, the club and head coach issued apologies after the incident. The International Shooting Federation has gone back to the old competition format for the finals. The federation has dropped the one-on-one -on -one duel for the gold medal, a rule which was introduced last year. This comes after the I I ISSF tweaked the competition rules many times, which led to confusion among coaches and shooters. In the UFC, Alex Pereira has officially announced his move to the light heavyweight division. This comes after he lost the UFC middleweight championship to Israel uh, Adesanya at UFC 287. Pereira insists he can make middleweight but sees a bright future for himself at 205 pounds. In American football, the owner of the Washington Commanders, Dan Snyder, is about to sell the franchise to an investment group. The group is led by private equity investor Josh Harris and includes former NBA star Magic Johnson. The deal is valued at a little under $6 billion. However, no agreement has yet been sent to the National Football League's offices. drama series Game of Thrones is set to get a new prequel. The prequel is based on author George R. R. Martin's Dunk and Egg book series. The show is titled A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. The plot of the prequel is set 90 years prior to the events of Game of Thrones. A new spin-off for the popular sitcom The Big Bang Theory is under development. Co-creator Chuck Lore revealed the plans to create another comedy series from the Big Bang Theory universe. The show will have a new cast with guest appearances by members of the original show. The Big Bang Theory already has one spin-off called Young Sheldon on air. Streaming platform Netflix has announced the fourth and final season of its comedy series Never Have I Ever. The news was announced with a short teaser clip showing its Indian-American protagonist enter senior year at school. The last installment of this series will premiere on the 8th of June. Director Anurag Kashyap's film Kennedy has been se selected for the Cannes Film Festival. It's the only Indian film to make it to the prestigious festival this year. The film has been chosen for the midnight screening section of the festival. Actors Sunny Leone and Rahul Bhatt feature in the film. Production has begun for the second season of the thriller series The Tourist. 
actors Jamie Dornan and Danielle McDonald are reprising their roles from season 1. While the first season was set in the Australian outback, season 2 is set in Ireland. Shooting for the series began in Dublin early, earlier this week. Actor Alex Wolf is set to play late singer Leonard Cohen in a new biopic series. The show is titled So Long Marianne. It's named after a song by Cohen. The Canadian singer had written the song for his muse and partner, author Marianne Ihlen, in 1967. Shooting for the series is underway at the Greek island of Hydra. That's the place where Cohen first met Ilhan. Actor Brendan Fraser will be honoured at the Greenwich International Film Festival. The Oscar winner will be awarded for his philanthropic work. The award ceremony will also benefit a non-profit organisation that works with people with special needs. The ceremony will be held on the 3rd of May. Comedy Festival Just for Laughs is back with its 41st edition. The Stand-Up Comedy Fest will be held from the 14th to the 29th of July in Montreal, Canada. Com com comedians Ali Wong, Jonathan Van Ness and Anthony Jesselnik will headline the festival. It will be hosted by comedians Russell Peters and Jack Whitehall. French fashion house Saint, Saint Laurent is launching a film production banner. The banner is titled Saint Laurent Productions. It will be headed by artistic director Anthony Vaccarello. He will also design the costumes for the films. The banner has announced three films in its roster, including Khan shortlisted film Strange Way of Life. South Korean entertainment studio Pink Fong is making its debut in podcasts. A total of eight podcasts will be offered by the studio. Five of these podcasts will be in Korean, while three will be in English. The studio is best known for creating the Baby Shark franchise.